Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Stacy here from Creatively Stacy. Thank you for stopping by my page. Welcome. Um, if you stop in, please say hello. If you catch it on the replay, please say hashtag replay so I know you are here. Um, just figured we could all use a break from the doom and gloom and uh, do something creative and uh, focus on something positive, which is always a good practice to get into. And uh, for those of you that are stuck at home for whatever reason, I hope you uh, will grab some paints and paint along. And uh, if you got the kids at home, they can uh, grab some paints and paint along too. Uh, the one I did the other day, uh, one of the girls that was watching, Christy, she doesn't have any paints. She grabbed her colored pencils, did a great job. So, yeah, you can use this and, as a guide and grab your colored pencils, grab your crayons. Um, if you prefer oils or watercolors or whatever the case may be, um, you know, get creative. Use what you have. We are in a situation where things are not going great for a lot of people. So look around your house, see what you have on hand, and, and uh, grab it up and use it, right? I will be using acrylics today because um, that's what I have on hand. And I will be using uh, mixed media paper to paint on, which I highly recommend and love. Um, very economical way to do a lot of paintings at home. So you can always do that. I see it. I have a couple too. The, there's canvas panels you can get at the Dollar General or the Dollar Tree. Don't make a special trip, but if you're there getting toilet paper, if you're so lucky to be able to get some, <laughs> we're not so lucky here. Um, then grab one up while you're there, you know, for a buck. I think the little ones, you get like five of them for a dollar. So you could, you know, totally go nuts with that. So <laughs> I did the toilet paper hunt again today. We still have toilet paper. I'm not a hoarder. We don't have like cases of toilet paper. We have, we have a couple of packages. <laughs> so we're good to go, but we're looking. Any of my local friends get an inside scoop on when the delivery trucks are coming to our area. Send me a message. <laughs> oh, it'll be fine. This will all be fine. In the meantime, we need to find fun, creative things to do while we're home. We can't spend all of our days watching the news. And I mean, you got to do the homework, kids. But seriously, art is part of school. You need a creative outlet. So here you go. And um, yeah, so... I am going to do the full painting today, so I do, yes, I did get my blow dryer out. I am going to blow dry the background because I want to not be here forever. Hi, Christy. Um, so follow along. Grab your paints, grab your pencils, grab your crayons, grab whatever, and uh, let's have a little bit of fun. All right. I'm going to turn you down here so you can see. Get up here so you can see. What is that? Huh. There, there we go. I don't know why that was cutting you off. Sorry about that. So for the background to start with, I'm going to get out white and black today. I don't really have this all planned out. I've thought about it in my head, but it's not. Um... <laughs> it's a paint as you go day, which I often do. So I'm going to dip into mostly my white and just touch a smidge of my black. Where are you? Mostly my white, just a smidge of my black. And I'm gonna start going across. You can see, because I'm going back and forth, I'm getting some gray, I'm blending as I go. So just for a little interest, right? The more you go over it, the more gray you're gonna get. When you put your brush back in, make sure you put it in the same way so the white's on the side that it was on and the black's on the side that it was on. And always grab more white than black. If you get too much black, just wipe some back off on your plate. It's not the end of the world. This is just a relaxed painting, so. I'm using a chip brush. You can use a large flat brush. That would work just as well. I like the lines that the chip brush gives you, the, the stripes in your painting. Um, with a flat brush, you get more blending and less lines. So if you are going for that lined look, 
highly recommend grabbing a chip brush. They're very inexpensive. Um, I haven't done a tutorial on one in a while. When they're new, they shed. So when they're new, before you use them, grab your hand around them and pull like this. And it'll pull out a lot of those loose, loosey gooseys for you. So again, just mostly white, a little bit of black, and I'm going back and forth over it, so I'm getting a blend, which is giving me that gray. So there you go. Hi, Tina. I can see a couple of you popping on here. Hello, hello. Thanks for popping in. I know, it's kind of weird to do this gray background for my spring painting, you guys, but I want the flowers to be the main attraction. And this is just a background. So you can do, you could do any color. I mean, you could do blue and white, green and white, purple and white, whatever makes you, whatever makes your heart happy. I was hoping I could get outside and paint today. I think it's going to be like 50 degrees, but it's not yet. And it's really windy. I'm really itching to get outside. Used up all my white. I'll just get what I can out of the end of this. So there we have, now I'm going to dab just into the black with just the ends of my brush, really, really like, Willow and I are watching, oh good, good, and I'm going really lightly, just touching my page, my brush is straight up and down, and I'm just dragging, I'm letting that catch. If you're using a flat brush instead of a chip brush, turn it on its side and just really lightly and kind of skip a little bit you can get a similar effect, okay? But this is a really cool way and a really easy way to get kind of a wooden background. Uh, I'm gonna go in and put a couple of lines on here and I think you'll see. And you can't mess this up, you guys. If it's too much, go back in with your white and black, paint right over it and do it again. But we don't want to get too excited about it. Like I said, it is a background. Got to go eat lunch, but I'll be back to see what you did. Awesome. Cool. Yes. Yeah, stop back and check us out. Thank you. So you can see how quick and easy that was. I'm going to wash this brush out. And I did that with a completely dry brush. Usually I dampen a brush with a background, but I knew I was going to do this part and I wanted a dry brush. Um, you could also just use two brushes and dampen your brush for the first go round, and then when you did those little black streaks at the end, grab a dry brush to do that with. It'd be easier for you. So now I'm just going to grab a little angle brush. I am going to wet it, dry it off on a paper towel. I'm going to dab into that black, and I'm going to wipe most of it right back off. It's still pretty wet, you guys. Let me dry it a little better. I think I put it on the wet part of the paper towel. There we go. I'm going to dab into that black, wipe most of it off. So I just have some on the end of my brush. And you could get out a ruler and do this, but um, I don't get too excited about it. And just eyeball. I mean, yes, you could measure it too. <laughs> Lots of options. But, you know, this is supposed to be fun and creative. So I'm lightly just dragging mostly a straight line. As straight as I'm gonna get, I guess, across my page. Ran out of paint. <laughs> so I'm I'm keeping my brush light. I'm not um, pushing down too terribly hard. And again, if your line gets too thick or something, you can go back and blend it out. I'll show you how to do that in a second. You can always go back and make it darker if you feel like it was too light, right? So there, there we are with that. If you feel like it's, I'm going to take this out. I always regret that later, but I know it makes a lot of noise for you guys. Um, can go and just do a couple little uh, half C's here and there. Give yourself some little knots. Um, you could go in with a detail brush and really get really fancy with that, but paint flew off my 
background thing. Now I have turquoise in my ceiling. There we go, or in my wall. There we go. But I find if you just keep it loose, don't get too overzealous with it. You'll be fine. I'm not worried about putting too much in the middle because that's where I'm going to put my flowers. But So there we go with that. And if you felt like your lines got too fat and they bug you for whatever reason, I'll show you how to fix that. Just rinse your brush off, grab back into that gray with that same little angle brush. <sighs> Dry it on a paper towel first. I don't know why I'm not drying things today. To that gray, and you can go right up next to your line and thin it down a little bit. But just putting some of that gray next to it. And I wouldn't try to do a full straight line. I would just do some dashes. You guys know. And it just blends it back a little bit if you don't like it as strong. If you use a ruler or a straight edge, you could get it thinner by using a smaller brush too. But I just like it to be fun, not too serious about that, right? So there we go. Guys, as you're popping on, say hello, hello. All right, so. We got that part done. Simple, easy background. It's actually fairly dry. I'm not going to bug you with my blow dryer just yet. I did wash that brush off, but it's not entirely necessary. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put down a little cup. I did a painting the other day and I asked if they wanted a cup or a vase. And what I was seeing was vase. And then afterwards I see that there was some cup requests. So I thought I, thought I would honor that today. And you can draw with chalk if you're more comfortable with doing that. I usually regret doing it with this green on here, you guys. But I'm going to do a smile line. Okay. I'm going to come straight down. However big you want your cup to be. I'm going to do another smile line. And I'm going to come straight down. I'm going to do a backwards C. I'm going to do another backwards C. I'm not going to worry about filling in the back of it because, why is it sideways? Oh, oh because it's the handle. I'm not going to worry about filling in the back of it because the flowers are going to cover that. So as long as I got so much black on my paint, I think the background of my cup will be black. And if you're a more advanced painter and are just using this as an idea, you can go in and do a lot of shading and details after the fact. So please feel free. But if you are a beginning painter, you can completely do this and have something really nice to enjoy without worrying about any of that other stuff. When I paint this, you can the smile line I'm following with my paintbrush. Do you guys know what I mean when I say a smile line? I'm just saying a curve, like if you were, if you made a smiley face, you know. I don't know if that's really a technical term. That's my term that I use. Paint in a smile. You'll be happy. You'll have smiles all the way through. And you could do this with a bigger brush if you're in a hurry and want to paint it really quick. I'm not in a hurry. I'm just taking a few minutes out of the day to enjoy. Hi Shirley, how are you today? We're doing a breaking up the the doom and gloom. Doing the coffee mug thing. I'm thinking spring, although <laughs> It's not looking like it just yet, but I wanted my flowers to pop, so I did a very neutral background. And we'll decorate this cup, you guys. I'm just laying in a base 
getting it down so I have a good starting point, right? Go back and clean up any of your edges, right? Keeping the shape that we talked about. Trying to cover up that green chalk, you guys. That green chalk gives me fits. There we go. Oh, got into the white. We're going to roll with it. I'm going to bring the base of my cup down just a little bit below that handle. There we go. Just think of it as uh, you made your own pottery, so it can be any shape you want, right? Unless you're a really good potter, then... And I guess you'd have to be more serious about that decision. But So there's that. We've got a mug getting ready to take the dogs for a walk. Oh, you must have good weather today. Oh, we have good weather. It's pretty out, but it's, it's a little windy. But it's pretty. Makes me want to think it's going to be spring. All right, so wash that brush off and dry it. Come back and paint this one later, Shirley. When you get back. I'm going to grab my liner brush. You could use a detail brush. Um, whatever floats your boat. And I'm going to think we just went out into the garden and picked a few posies, right? So I'm just giving myself an idea of where things are going to go. I think three flowers will be good. You could do a zillion and a half flowers if you wanted to. I'll wash my brush off. I'm going to grab green. Yellow and blue makes green, you guys, if you want to make some green. If you have the primary colors, you can do that. I happen to have a green on hand, so I'm going to grab that. I'm going to grab that same angled brush that I used. And I'm going to get some more white because I used up all my white. Maybe. There we go. And I'm going to dip into the green and the white. So I have both on my brush. Where are you? There you are. 68 and sunny. Ooh, I am jealous. We're going to make some leaves, you guys because this way they will be behind our flowers. You can put your leaves anywhere you want to. Artist's choice. Right? So I'm basically doing a curved line and a curved line and then joining them together. I got a little black in my brush still, and that's okay. If you guys paint with me long enough, you'll know that I don't get excited about my colors getting all mixed up. It's all good. And some of these might end up getting painted over, and that's fine too. We're just laying down some interest. And these aren't even real flowers, you guys. These are just our imagination, our creation. So you don't have to be worried about your leaf shape being a certain shape. I am going to touch that black and the green and make myself a little bit darker of a green. Yeah, you can see. I'm just touching that black, touching that green, and darkening it up. So it's giving me a new shade. If you get too much black in it, add more green. There we go. Just doing some whimsical 
colors of green, right? Giving us a little variation in our floral here. And you could go as crazy with that as you want to. But see by just adding a little bit of black to that green, you get a whole another shade. And I'm gonna go ahead down here, do that same thing. I just touched into my white because I didn't have any white. Maybe we'll go into that light green and white over here. Okay. So there we go. We got a cute little background. We got a nice little cup started and we've got some greenery going on. Right? Easy, simple, fun. So now's the part where you need to decide what color you want your flowers. And I was thinking I would just do a white and yellow. Um, I'm thinking that's what I'm going to do. I could change to blue because that's my favorite color. But I'm trying to, I'm trying to explore new things. So yeah, we're going to go with white. So I'm getting a round brush out now. You could use an angle brush too, but it's good to play with different brushes when you're painting, especially when you're painting in your journal to um, really give yourself a better idea of how to use all the tools. And sometimes I hold it like a pen and sometimes I hold it back here. It depends on if you want it looser or tighter. Um, make sure my, is my page curling up so you can't see. So I'm just going to do a circle and a circle and a circle, right? Because I had three stems kind of coming out, so I'm doing three flowers. If you have more stems, obviously, do more flowers. From that circle, I'm just gonna draw some petals. So I'm doing out and in, out and in, fill it in. Right? Just making little petals around. You can make them as big as you want them to be. I think I'm going to go ahead and make these a little bigger because I have the room on here to do that and I'm only doing three flowers. If you're doing a lot of flowers you might not have as much room so you might want to make your petals a little smaller. If you lose the point on your end turn your, um, if you're using an angle brush turn your point out. If you're using a round brush turn your point out. I'll give you a little more pointed situation here. Pointed petals, pointed petals. Okay, so I got those going. I'm going to let those dry. I'm going to come over here, do the same exact thing. This one, maybe I'll just do down. Maybe that one will be kind of tipped, right, if I only do the bottom of it. It's looking really good. We'll be back to finish. Oh, good. Yes, please come back and join us to finish. And I hope she feels better. So sorry. Feel better, Willow. So same thing over here. Just go ahead and fill in all your flowers. Remember in nature that things are not always exactly the same. So feel free to make your petals any shapes, any sizes, they don't have to be equal. You can go back in and fill in more if you want to. Grab 
back to that first one and add a few more. There we go. This would make a really sweet little picture frame painting just to put up on your shelf. You could make a nice Mother's Day gift. Do this on the uh, front of your card for your mom and dad, your mom, and do it on a card and send to your neighbor who can't get out of the house, right? Think of nice things we can do with our art. Get it out there, share it with people. I just grabbed out some yellow. I'm using that same brush I washed it off. And go back into these centers, right? They're not quite dry, so we'll see how that works out for me. If yours aren't dry, you can blow dry them a little bit. This one I'm kind of leaving a little bit flatter on the bottom and rounding it up above that flower just a little bit. We'll go back and do a little bit of detail on these two, but just get them started. Give you the idea, you can run with it. How sweet are they, right? Okay, as long as we got the yellow going, and I think my black is mostly dry, I'm going to go ahead and just do dots, on, polka dots on my cup. You could do stripes, you could do chevron, you could do anything. You could um, get out some stencils and put a word on it. Whatever, whatever makes you happy. I'm just going for quick and easy for demonstration purposes, but I'd love if you guys got really good and creative and did your mugs however the mood strikes you. But by adding a bright yellow to this black mug, for one, the yellow will stand out against it really good and it'll just brighten up this whole painting. So that's a really nice way to make colors pop. If you put them on a dark background, they really, really stand out. I'm sure you don't want to sit here and watch me do all these dots. I'm going as fast as I can. Hi, Joanne. Just got here so pretty. We just got a little snow. Oh my gosh. Somebody else was just telling me it was 68 and they were going to take their dogs for a walk and you're getting snow. Uh, crazy, crazy. It's pretty, pretty nice out here today. I don't know what the temperature is. I think it's supposed to get to 50. <coughs> I wanted to paint outside, but it's a little chilly and it's windy. So no luck. Plus you guys, it's so windy here. We had a um, gazebo thing one of those um, cloth topped ones and um, we didn't take the cloth top off for the winter because we thought it would be nice to be able to go out there and be safe and covered from the snow well we got bad windstorm and with the snow and it being wet and everything it ripped it to shreds and so now it doesn't have a cover on it but we have another one to put on. It's so windy here, though. I don't know if it's going to work out. Um, we're going to try it again this year because I like to go out there and paint and have it be covered because our back deck can actually get really, really hot when it's in because it's full sun. There's no shade. So I'm hoping that it'll work, but I don't know. The weather here. Sending some love your way and spreading some sparkles for replays. Oh, thank you, Leanne. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Just doing a little spring floral, brighten up our day. If I miss, if you guys, some of you have made comments that I've missed, I'll catch them later. I'm trying to look up and see them before y'all scroll on by. Oop, I keep putting my hand in that green. 
You're not painting if you're not wearing paint, apparently. That's how it works in my world anyways. All right, we're almost done. Grr, we're in the home stretch. Okay, there we go on that. So we got pretty little, little dotty dots going on our cup. I'm going to take this same yellow and I'm going to outline those white flowers now that they're mostly dry. I'm using that same brown brush and I'm not going to do full lines. I'm not trying to trace my flowers. I'm just doing some dashes of color, okay? Keep your hand light and just do some dashes of color. And this is where we're just going in and brightening up our painting, adding a little bit of detail to it, brightening up those flowers. Yeah, I suppose you could have left them all white if you like white flowers, but this is fun. We're just having some fun. You can see what I mean. I didn't outline the whole thing. I just did some little lines. Very, very pretty. Daisies are my favorite flower. The temperature is 51. Okay, well, Joanne lives nearby from me, so if it's 51 there, it's probably 51 here. Thank you. Yeah. We need a little pick-me-up, Joanne, so we're just doing some floral fun. You're probably... are you? Do you knit or do you crochet, Joanne? I can't remember what you do. You're probably making stuff like crazy this time of year, being in the house all the time anyways, but. So there we go, we've got some yellow in our flowers. Oh, thank you, Patty. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go give a little definition to our leaves. I'm gonna rinse this off, get the yellow off it. Still using that same round brush. I'm gonna go into my white. And I'm just going to do some lines and dashes with these leaves, too, guys. We're just brightening everything up, loosening up, giving a little something extra. I'm not doing full outlines. Some of them I'm doing one line. Some of them I'm doing a couple. No rules here. They can be fat lines or thin lines. So now we have like those variegated leaves, right? We have a little more interest in our little coffee cup decoration. And the nice thing about this is if your leaves weren't making you fall in love with them, hopefully this will do that for you, All right? So there we go, we got a little something something in our leaves, and the only thing we're missing is a little something something in our coffee pot. You could use a detail brush for this too, you guys. I'm just choosing to use that same round brush just to show you that if you had just a flat brush and a little angle brush and a round brush, you could do all of this. You don't have to have the other. Of course, I did cheat and use my liner brush in there, but I could have done it with this. So I'm still in the white. I'm now doing some dashes around my coffee pot. Really light hand. I'm swirling my brush to get to a point. And you guys, this is all just to give a little bit of whimsy, a little bit of fun. Right? There we go. Now I feel like right in here, my flowers kind of are going into nothing, and I didn't color that in ahead of time because I didn't want to deal with all the black without blow drying. But I'm just going to go in here in a couple of little spots and add just the tiniest bit of black just to kind of fill in where the back of that cup would have been, which is very minute, so not a deal breaker by any means. So there we go. Something quick and easy and fun. You can do any colors you choose to do, but wouldn't this look cute if you did this on a card and 
ran over to your neighbors and put a little note in it so I'd, hey, you know, thinking of you, knock on the door and run away, you know, just to brighten their day. You could definitely put it in a frame and put it on your shelf, brighten up a room for spring. So yeah, like I said, you can go on and embellish away as much as you like, but I just thought that's a very sweet and simple, fun art break. You can never figure out what the lighting is doing in here. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much for joining me, you guys. I appreciate it. Hope you're all hanging in there, taking time to take care of yourselves and see all the positive, pretty things that are going on around us, right? See the good in the things. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Bye.